Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. Quick reminders as always, bit of an advertorial. Please do uh, support us th through Patreon if you can, um, or PayPal. All of that information is on the website. Please visit our shop as well and buy some of these t-shirts that we've had designed through Teespring. Uh, it's all there. Yeah, please go on uh, online uh, and, and support, that, uh, support the association as much as possible. This video though is all about this thing. Uh, quite a common accessory, it's the belt box carrier fits onto the side of the Vickers, as, we, as we'll see, uh, to support the ammunition box so that the number two doesn't have to feed in the belt all the time. Uh, we're gonna, we've done some firing with it, so you'll be able to see the sort of, you know, with and without. Uh, there's plenty of videos online of it without, and you can see some of the problems caused by that. Uh, so hopefully we explain what it is uh, and how it helps and you know, how stoppages are caused by, uh, by feeding. So poor feeding to be exact, but that wasn't the original reason. So this is June 1915 and actually the original reason to introduce the belt box carrier was to shorten the amount of length between the feed block and the box to avoid bad weather. Uh, if it gets wet, muddy, um, you know, it, it can cause the stoppages through that way rather than through uh, bad adjustment of the ammunition belts. That also compounds with gas. And it stays in service right up until here in 1949. Uh, it's still in the parts lists at that point. And it seems to remain in service until the end of the Vickers service with the British in the 1960s. Now to fit it, what you had to do was take out the rear tripod pin and it just slots on, uh, slots on quite easily like that. You put the pin back in and then it's able to take the ammunition box this is a wooden number three ammunition box with the short end of the lid there. It fits the liners, but a lot more loosely. These boxes are a little bit bigger. And you know, to take it off, it's exactly the reverse. Just take out that one pin, unhook it like so, pop the pin back in, and it's as if it was never there. Now, it could be used for anti-aircraft fire, and you can see that here. But quite a lot of the time, rather than the belt box carry, you'll actually see bespoke anti-aircraft mounts and anti-aircraft ammunition boxes being used. So here we've got it set up on the gun with a Second World War liner and the stripless type ammunition belt Mark IV. Uh, it doesn't work brilliantly like this to start with, but you'll see and you'll get the general impression of how it works and how it benefits firing. Well, that worked quite well. Now you see a short clip, and it is a very short clip for apparent reasons, uh, of it not being used. It's pretty bouncy anyway. And it caused the stoppage. Now a common theme on these videos is the ingenuity of the Australian forces. They didn't like the big bulky uh, belt box carrier that was first introduced. So introduced this folding belt box carrier where you just hook the belt box in, has a single support. Actually goes in and fits in the uh, V-shaped notch that's seen on many, many tripods uh, that are on the collector's market today. And you can see it in action and it continues in action, much smaller and easier to carry. Now we don't have one of these in the collection, so you do if, if you do know the whereabouts of one, please do get in touch. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to, and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.